perfect i just got a piece of artwork it says find my wallet and, and it's 8th of september 8th of september <laughs> there you go i keep drawing on this so you okay. can have a whole piece of art awesome awesome great hi thank you so much mm -hmm. so boyana you are my first stranger awesome ever i am uh, honored to be the first stranger <laughs> yeah that's that's great just bring a little mic a little oh, closer yeah. like three yeah, four yeah. inches it, is good that's perfect good. yeah awesome. perfect so up until this point i've had my friends on close friends you know people that i grew up with mm -hmm. and you are the first person that i had no idea who you were right all right we did not know each other we met last week in person mm -hmm. we spoke on the phone maybe a month ago yes and we are recording a podcast so thank you thank you for coming thank on you. i love doing this because i know that this all comes from passion and mm -hmm. recording a podcast for with other people is nothing to do that is um selfish yeah so that's i will always support that even if i was the first person you know right <laughs> which is that's I'm a, I'm a first stranger. I'm going to add this to, to my uh -huh. heart. First stranger. <laughs> first stranger on the podcast that was brave, en brave enough to come on. And I hope um, people see that it's, you know, it's, it's welcoming and it's fun to do. So, um, again, thank you for coming on. But let's talk a little bit about you. Okay. I do want to mention how I heard of you. Oh, right? go ahead. Please. I was going to ask you that. See, <laughs> I don't have my questions here. <laughs> Next time I'm, I'm bringing my questions. Okay, go ahead. So I think it's, you know, um, we got to give credit where credit is due. Yes, absolutely. And how I heard about you is the Balkan Social magazine. Okay. Right? Tanya? And uh -huh. Tanya, correct. Mm -hmm. Nice. So she <laughs> is the one that um introduced you to me well not personally but her posting you know your story in her magazine and on her social media oh that's beautiful i was like you know let me check out her artwork because she posted your instagram mm -hmm. handle so i clicked on your on your instagram and i looked at your artwork and i saw you're in chicago and you're serbian um not that that matters but you know this but it is, does matter you yeah. know it gives you another uh like a check to reach out uh-huh right? Mm -hmm. right like a like a like an open door right yeah we have a second language that we speak together yeah right Th that's there's it. something okay. in common that's cool yeah that's awesome I'm, uh we we need to give a shout out to to tanya and to social uh balkan social yeah, yeah. balkan social is her magazine and yes i know i i do bring other uh, uh, women artists to her to her magazine yeah uh, occasionally yeah we just did featured uh two chicago artists one is indian and one is american lauren asta and jenny Wyatt. uh-huh yeah nice getting back to tanya and balkan social mm -hmm. i just like wanna like her magazine it's it's working right like i don't know what her you know what her passion is or why she did it but i have an idea you know to bring people together so we hear each other's stories and if she did not put you in her magazine and if I was not following her on her social media, I don't think I would have heard of you. So I'm well, glad that she did. That's it. That's beautiful. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, <laughs> that is the power of social media. So mm -hmm. as much as we are saying today that it can be addicting, yes, it is. But it's also bringing people together. Otherwise... I mean, prior to this conversation, I told you, I, I'm talking with a friend who's in Belgrade. Yeah. And, you know, like we haven't seen each other forever, but we are still friends. How are we going to be able to communicate without internet? Right. Without social media, without, you know, like are you, you might say happy birthday to somebody who you really don't mm -hmm. have on the calendar, that it's their happy birthday and that makes their day or to to talk with your relatives who are you know who are not here yeah so 
or find friends like people are bragging about that like especially my generation find friends who are like when we were in in high school there was no internet mm -hmm. there was no internet i mean we had commodore 64 when i was fourth grade that's pretty much you know when it started but yeah i can hear it okay good yeah, but, <laughs> sorry uh -huh, yeah I'm, I'm watching you and i'm trying to keep the conversation going. <laughs> just anyway. keep talking now mm -hmm. uh but yeah that's that's the beauty of social media mm -hmm. that's that's why that's, and I agree. that's how you reached out yeah yeah you found me on social media if you saw me in a magazine and there is only my phone number or something phone number yeah. or whatever like i will answer because that's why i put the phone number mm -hmm. there <laughs> right but yeah but so, social media helps put a face to the phone number right um, or 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 the brand you know like you you found me not as boyana Ilich. you you went on my correct page yeah so that's that's what it is you found tanya because she has the balkan social the balkan so social whatever you do is mm -hmm. like it's you we are totally able to to put it out there yeah we're all connected mm -hmm. Totally. And it's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing it's yeah it's it, it is great it really is mm -hmm. and that's how like i saw an opportunity for you know a podcast too um and not so much an opportunity i actually enjoy talking to people and getting to know people and um but you know i was like this is a new thing this is how we can bring all of us closer together and not just us as a community but like our community with other communities within mm -hmm. chicago we, you know it's just a way to bring everybody closer together um but uh, when you said like keeping in touch with family through social media mm -hmm. i like it because when it was just the phone you know you gotta call people now you have their pictures and their stories so you know what they're doing you know and you can just say hi and how are you every once in a while but like before when you used to just call people mm -hmm. it's just a different experience so the, social media is super important yeah it is uh again it's it's about how how do you use it and sadly anything that is new innovative and or is existing mm -hmm. can be used in a bad way and in a in a good way think about penicillin or right drugs or bombs or yeah. you know uh any anything literally anything can be used as a, as a negative and as a positive so it's on us to choose the way that we are gonna go yeah that's yeah <laughs> absolutely that's what i speak and breathe yeah <laughs> that's that's what it is so before we like go any further into what you do and your artwork you just tell me a little bit about yourself where you're from and i know you just mentioned that um you haven't seen one of your friends in 15 years and um so let's just kind of dig into your background a little bit i was born in niche in 1977 that's how old i am that's not <laughs> old uh i don't feel old so yeah. i don't care um and then i grew up in Pirot, mm -hmm. which is close to the border of bulgaria that's so niche is pretty much about two hours from from the border mm -hmm. and if you go south uh from belgrade niche is Oh, so I haven't drove in Serbia for 15 <laughs> years. So, and I don't remember kilometers because I've been in Chicago. So here we measure miles. No, we, we measure time. We don't measure oh. miles. <laughs> <laughs> time. Don't you know that? <laughs> how far is this about an hour? Like, how far is this? It's about an hour. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, so Nish is about 40, 30 minutes drive mm -hmm. from Pirot okay uh, so i grew up in pirot and i went to high school there and then i moved to belgrade in 1996 to uh start a college and i studied um clothing and uh, textile design mm -hmm. and then i started my own um my own line yeah and little by little i got good clients in that time in serbia it was awesome to have leo burnett as a client you know who was that 
Leo Burnett, that's a marketing agency that okay. covers um, Mercedes, covers Philip Morris, all the cigarettes. Okay. At Marlboro and uh, whatever that is, you know, all. The, uh, but it's interesting because at the time when I got them as a client, mm-hmm. all the tobacco business was pushed out from United States uh-huh. because it, you know, the, the law started to be more strict and thankful, you know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's gonna kill you. <laughs> well, uh, sadly, that was that was my first Western client when I was fashion designing. So I did all their promo. So it's not about cigarettes. It's about their promotion um, material that I did. I yeah. I did all um, designing for their uh, from from their um, consumer uh, merchandise. Mm-hmm to uh to their uh promo uh, parties concerts and uh bunch of marketing um marketing plans that they were putting out there mm-hmm. like through uh they, they will have promoters going to a different parts of the city and you know just you know giving a flyers and everything yeah. so it was fun too but that was not my brand was just my brand my collection my design and i showed with uh, fashion selection and fashion week a belgrade for seven years straight mm. and then i came to toronto in 2006 to show my um 2006 line and um I came to after about three weeks in Toronto. So for that project, I came to Chicago to see my sister who was at the time, it was two years since she moved. Mm -hmm. So she's the first one (laughs) to step here. And uh, I promised to her, I'm, you know, like I'm I'm there, I'm going to apply for American visa and I'm going to come. And of course I got American visa like this because Mm -hmm. once when you have Canadian visa, Americans just go like, whoop, here you go. Right. Yeah. Uh, so you lived, you lived in Canada it, too? or No, I, I was there only for three weeks, but okay. that, that's what brought me to Chicago. I was like, okay, I gotta meet my sister. I haven't seen her at that time. It was like two years straight. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I fell in love with this city, fell in love with architecture, fell in love with culture, mm-hmm. with people. And my plan was to move to Amsterdam and live there, you know, start career there as a, as a fashion designer. Uh, and then that's why I stayed in, in uh, Belgrade for a while because the, uh, the whole, when you start doing something, as you know, it takes time to pick up. I picked, I just picked up, it's like after bombing and economy was like completely, I mean, there is no economy there. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, so I, the whole plan was, okay, let's just move to, Amsterdam was a, a city where I could find myself as a creative and they had a great artist program. So I was like, okay, this is going to be great. Like mm-hmm. I can make money there. I can live there. And I, mo- I came to Chicago. And I stayed, they gave me, I think it was like two months visa to stay. And I stayed until the last day. Like I, I bought a returning ticket. Like if I needed to go <laughs> to be home on 18th of December, I was home like pretty much 17th, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, That was it. Uh, and I came back and then, then that first year was like back and forward. I met my ex-husband here. Mm-hmm. And then in 2007, I definitely moved to the United States, to, to Chicago. And what happened is ever since I was little, I always drew and painted. Like mm-hmm. Paint was always there as a medium. Like I moved through mediums so much through my career and I'm still going through different mediums, but it was always, it's got to be paint. It's got to be some sort of like, you need to leave a mark. And there is such a significance about that. Like, that's a mark. Mm-hmm. You know, like a graffiti artist. They got to write their names there. Like, I'm like, they're anything but, but my name. Like, I got to make it so when you see it, you think about me. Mm. You think that, oh, this is Boyana's work. And through fashion, I show that. But it was always that need to, to bring paint in it. 
So there is no collection out there that I had without hand painting on the top of everything done. It's usually like two nights before the show. I will be like, okay, <laughs> we are going to a studio. Let's go. And the, the actually Milica, the, the, the friend that I texted with before uh, this podcast, she's, um, she's in ceramics. Like she's a sculptor, actually a sc- sculptor. Mm-hmm. And I'll bring her with me and she will be like, okay. I'm witnessing another crazy, <laughs> crazy 48 hours before the storm, right? right. And I'm like, no, this is a storm. Anyway, <laughs> um, so that, I'm telling you this because that was kind of, it's packed. Mm-hmm. Like we, we want to do things. We, you want to talk with people and you want to bring people together. It's been packed in you. It's like that idea that... Um, that information that you want to do that it's just the matter of time when you unpack it yeah and a- even when i was designing i will be like i gotta find the time to paint mm. i need to find it okay after this show i'm gonna just i just need to, to have an art show yeah. i need to paint you know and so i moved here and within the first year i, I got pregnant on, on honeymoon mm-hmm. so okay now i find myself like okay chicago new new city i my sister works all the time of course she lives in chicago mm-hmm. we, all live, we all work all the time right right um <laughs> and even though that she's my sister like her people are not my people like we don't have the same interests mm-hmm. we are just different and as a every creative will tell you that like we are specific like i gotta go to see that i need to find this and this is what i do and then you are kind of driven and you have your goals and all i wanted was just to learn more about art and to learn more about you know like what this city has to offer when it comes to art and what i learned during that first couple of years and you know in the meantime i'm pregnant Mm -hmm. and i have no friends here (laughs) and my ex-husband he he has to go to work Mm -hmm. and i have to figure out how to get some sort of work and as artist i'm trying to figure like okay what can i do like i and i painted in within a whole time like it's 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 madness like when i think back now it's like that year when i was like okay you're expecting a child you're trying to figure out the new continent and you're learning about the new city you're getting lost you're like this is before gps you know like, yeah. i'll get on a red line and call from like 3050 <laughs> <laughs> and highway and be like "Fuck, what did i miss <laughs> like, I did not out in a loop. but how else are you gonna learn right. and not to mention this is chicago it's not just you know it, it's it's been crime in Chicago yeah. in 2007 too, so it's um, it was interesting, and in the in the middle of all of that time, I am about six months pregnant, and I am painting a mural in my son's room, mm-hmm. and I painted the train and the, you know how Chicago apartments are like right next to each other. Mm-hmm. We were in old Irving Park, and my neighbor who has five kids at that time she saw me through the window and she goes like this <laughs> and she goes like huh? and i was like okay so she wants me to get down and then go to her house to paint that was my interpretation yeah. and that was it <laughs> like, and so, that was it right and that was you it. were right and i got down and she goes like you are crazy <laughs> like i know <laughs> <laughs> she goes you are pregnant why are you on a ladder i'm like that's not leather that's a step stool <laughs> i see what she was saying get down from the get step stool. down from the step stool <laughs> she goes like this you know? i'm like yeah you're i'm pregnant get down from the step stool and come over so she so that was my first job here yeah <laughs> so she did have you paint something for her mm, yes okay she waited for me to have a baby by the way uh-huh. <laughs> she's like you are not painting like this is just gonna get bigger i'm like or you know yeah she knows better but so little by little that grew uh into what you can see now like yeah. you met danny he's 14 mm-hmm. uh it wasn't easy it's just not giving up yeah being 
literally numbing yourself with your passion to not give up. Yeah. Yeah. In the moments when most of people question, you're like, wait a minute, you really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody, everybody, ask anybody who moved to this country, your parents, right? Yeah. It takes time. It takes time to start the business and grow it. Plus, when you are immigrant and when you come to a different continent, like it takes time. You need to have a plan. You just need to stick with what you want to want, what you want yeah. get to to become. And then raising a child in the same time, it's you are compromising both. Mm -hmm. You can't be full time here and here. Right. Nah. So it's just okay, dividing <laughs> your your time, and especially being. Um, creative it's not that i went to work for some corporate that is like nine to five mm -hmm. check in and out of course that like knowing uh, like people should give 100 percent, but there are jobs out there that you can kind of rely on a paycheck right right i right. mean there are jobs like most of the world functions mm -hmm. that way I did not give up on, on the idea that I am like my own business. I'm mm -hmm. an ep entrepreneur. This is how I grew up. That's in my veins. And I don't know any better. Right. Like I can work for somebody else. I love being on the huge teams. I love delivering somebody else's idea. But that doesn't make me 100% happy. Right. So if I have to raise a child, why wouldn't I just push what I am? Mm-hmm. And both on, are uh, at that moment not paying any dime. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's so that that that's a difficult part about this, and it's just you know all of us find a way how to navigate. I will say that from the moment that I was born, I'm a positive person. Mm -hmm. I don't see even no, as we were just talking. I don't see no as something bad. Right. It just, you know, it just made a space for something better. Yeah. One door closes, <laughs> yeah. another door yeah, opens. Ciao, yeah, ciao, <laughs> bye. You know, yeah. swipe left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. So that's, that's a short story, I guess. Yeah. Short. Like it took, it took a minute, but yeah. <laughs> no, I love it. I love mm -hmm. the story because I like how you said um, um, that passion is, is going to be inside of you. No matter what you do, you still had that that itch for art right for it's painting. you it's i you know it's not that i didn't try to do something yeah. else like of course i i had moments in my life that and we can dig deeper for that like i tried to do or to find jobs that are like security when it comes to a job and that they have some sort of creativity mm. in it because that's who i am even if you give me to be a banker Mm -hmm. I'm going to find creative ways to execute, right? Right. And for some reason, we are as, as a society just starting to understand that we need creative people on the team no matter what we do. Mm -hmm. Even if we are, you know, building a war plan, which is the worst thing right. ever, you know, you need some people who are like, you need creative people. It's yeah. just about uh, how you are going to find those opportunities and i found that it's harder to apply myself into something that it's not me mm -hmm. than to build something from nothing not even from scratch there was no scratch from nothing so you know you you walk into uh i try to do jobs that are creative mm -hmm. the it will just be a waste of both time. I found a successful, I mean, it's not that I cannot work for somebody. Like I worked in a, a film industry for a while and I still go in and out sometimes for a project and that's, but that's what I am. Mm -hmm. I will either do scenic painting or set decoration, which is. It's all creativity, me. right? It, it's all art. It's, it's yes. me. So, and it's all design. So, or I will dress people for TV. So, that is who I am. This mm -hmm. is what I what I do. This is what I deliver on. And that's that's when you're going to get the best of me. And 
it is about passion and it's also about learning and finding you and being as a youth being empowered to actually push to whoever you are yeah like i was i was joking with my son the other day i'm like hey if you want to be if you want to fart professionally <laughs> find a way how to make it work for you and he was laughing right <laughs> he looked at me, he's like, what are you talking about like whatever you want to do yeah. whatever you want to do there is a way especially if you live in a century when there is a way if you want to be professional blinker mm -hmm. <laughs> blink professionally make it branded do it like there is a way to do it yeah there is a way to to make it your because if you love it enough mm -hmm. to anything uh, needs um, sacrifice anything in life anything that we want to push from a to b even getting in a car yeah right it's time it's time. gas money yeah. money anything so that you are sacrificing from you are taking if you want to go for a ride for 20 minutes you're taking 20 minutes from something else correct so anything needs time or i i will say sacrifice or anything else uh that you cannot stop like the time is going mm -hmm. now if you say okay what is more important to go and, and hang out with friends or go and be seen or go mm -hmm. to or or have a gucci bag which you know some some people are happy and they, there is nothing wrong with that like some right. people are happy to uh work hard and bring home or or you know amazing product like is it the furniture is it mm -hmm. uh, fashion like i understand fashion i studied it so is it a watch is it a car like is it a plane like whatever it is it is, is it art yeah so people like to th this this is like a satisfaction for us but they sacrifice something so they can go and make money and then they can they can afford yeah. that so that part of like i am happy to actually go make money so i can buy ferrari mm -hmm. right that if you find what is that in you that actually makes you happy and doesn't make you feel like you're working that's the best thing like, yeah. and of course you need to uh it's normal to to spend time developing that because we all work on our, i hope that we all work on ourselves actually and we are growing all you all know the time. Like, un, until we die so yeah. and that's also you're going to be happy to learn if you love what you do and i come to you and i i'm like hey here is another book here's another you know podcast mm -hmm. here's another workshop here's another whatever it is like here is a four years of school mm -hmm. for that here's nine years of school like doctors right here's yeah. a 15 years of school like are you gonna do it that's it and are, is it gonna make you happy so once when you find that and that's why i encourage young youth like that's that's what really personally feeds me as an artist like i love empowering youth mm. because they need to try they it's naturally that they are going to try different things try different things and they got to understand that it's okay to fail right totally. like if, if you if, just, if, yeah this is the this is the part of growing like how do you know that you are not meant to play soccer if you don't fail if you don't try it yeah or if you don't lose a game or you know Right. Back, you know, back back home is like if you lose a game, you're a loser. Of course you are. <laughs> yeah. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's there is nothing else. Like. But you learn from that. that. Yeah. You learn that you gotta go yeah. practice gotta a little know. harder. I, I just gotta know. So what? Okay, let's go. Yeah. And there's another yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's that. It, personally, I really like empowering youth to mm. just be who they are because more we empower them to be who they are faster they they're going to be where they gotta be and less less fucked up they're gonna be i mean mm -hmm. that's that's pretty much it let's less uh mental illness is gonna be because they're not gonna be searching for something that is that they don't know un what unfindable yeah. because if you're searching for somebody else not you then mm. and i i feel like i was probably um you know 
right out of high school like we i was mentioning earlier not knowing what to do Mm -hmm. and but i guess i never really had a passion besides sports right sports were my passion Mm -hmm. but after a certain time you realize you're not going to do anything with sport well i could have been a coach you know but there's so many other influences from mm-hmm. the outside. Yeah, there's you so You listen much. to your parents. You listen to your friends. What are they doing? You listen to everybody by yourself, right? Because when we have kids, we teach them to listen to us. Yeah. And then it's about letting them go. Letting them go. But try, yeah. If the, and and it's 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 a crazy line. Like Danny is fourteen, and it's about letting him go Mm -hmm. like he's a teenager he needs to be what he wants to be not what i want him to be right Right. my mom used to say like i want my i wanted to be a ballerina so everybody who's my kid needs to be a ballerina (laughs) 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 that's what your mom wanted (laughs) no she didn't but she uh, she was joking about that like Uh that was that was like an internal joke when we see a kid not being happy playing piano or something like that or trying to go to to a soccer game you know to play soccer game but you can see that that kid is a ballerina for example she's right. like mom wanted to be a ballerina i'm gonna be a ballerina <laughs> <laughs> you know but there is in all of us you can ask any parent any mother mother spe- specifically there is something in us that is not there is no button to cancel it mm-hmm. and it's coming from a pure love it's like you want your kid to be happy yeah. you want them to s- and what successful means like finding if we know what success is for us or happiness Mm. or even wealth then faster we are going to and better we are going to be for them because being wealthy is not like money right no no it's being healthy for me it's like okay having a good mind having a strong mind Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can do whatever you want yeah being like you said, healthy, strong mind, mm-hmm. um, happy, and letting go, like you know. Yeah, that's wealthy. <laughs> that that's more wealthy than yeah. anything else. The money helps. Money helps. <laughs> mo- money. We of need course, money it helps. to live. Yes. We need money to live. It's not that we don't need money. Yeah, but you're, if no. you're unhappy, you're gonna be unhappy with money or without money. It's harder to to pursue whatever you or to do whatever you need to do to to make money yeah. if you're unhappy it's harder to, I, I don't know like i because you're not motivated like you said like like you mentioned you know if you if you love something and somebody gives you a book to mm-hmm. read you're gonna read it because mm-hmm. you love it so you're motivated right but if you don't love something then how are you gonna be motivated to go into work or to get better at it at Absolutely, it, you know? yes. So I 100% agree. And especially if you, uh, when, when we think about parenting today, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know how did we got here because I'm a parent. <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, That's the beauty of a podcast. It goes in all awesome, directions. Which is great, yeah. <laughs> but I I love saying that, the, and it's, it, it sounds like cliche, but it's a perfect, it's my favorite cliche, mm-hmm. is the best gift that you can give to your kids is time yeah it's to spend time with them whatever if they want to dig holes in in the backyard psh, i mean <laughs> sign me in <laughs> there's nothing better than that like, right there's no worry no, nothing else to do <laughs> you can go and you know we'll we'll get to china one day yeah, right? <laughs> so but that's that's the best because from those conver- like like think about conversations that happen when you are driving somewhere with somebody mm-hmm. that's like and if you take phones away right right? i was just thinking like that way i have that (laughs) rule like it's got to be equal days of like one day we are driving with a phone Mm -hmm. one day we are without phone Mm -hmm. so you had a phone yesterday so and those are like it's it's like a flip-flop because those are amazing times to to start the conversation to to talk with people yeah or what kind of music you want to like we are here right mm-hmm. we are we are talking like if i was on my phone or you were i mean i was on my phone earlier when you were setting up we did not talk right right, right. yeah right <laughs> so that's well i was busy too i was working on you, my thing yes but you were doing your thing and i was finishing work literally yes. but it's 
it's being present it's being with with giving your your children and giving youth uh opportunity to how are you gonna make them talk to you make them how are you going (laughs) to yeah you are not gonna make them but uh the only thing that we can make them is like when we make them <laughs> so that's all yeah. that's all everything else is even even when they're babies like they tell us what they want they just mm-hmm. don't want to listen or they, they pull you in the direction yeah. they want to go and, yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah so we have to it's it's very important to to understand what are we giving mm-hmm. yeah that's why my art is where it is like and how it is because it's about like I need to give like it's not about me like, so what do you what do you what is your what is your mission with your art what is your to empower people to empower people to think bigger than themselves yeah i love that mm-hmm. me too <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah you have any any success stories of people coming to you and um with like feeling encouraged or empowered because of your artwork any commission uh-huh. is a success story. Um, let me find. What is a commission? F- commission is uh, commissioned art. So if you, I do commissioned pieces that, for example, you like my art mm-hmm. and you want something for your house or for your office or you want a piece for your collection. Yeah. Um, what I encourage clients is to tell me the story. Because what i love to do is that like going back to when i moved to united states what i noticed is oh my god this yeah is, i hope it's that's awesome <laughs> this is picking up to do whatever it is right i think somebody <laughs> is else. Motorcycle outside. A motorcycle. there's a passion out there yeah. um it i noticed that people have a surface level of communication if you're getting better lately mm-hmm. i think COVID helped a lot but 2007 2008 like you could not get people to become close and i know i am not some like i have an accent mm-hmm. <laughs> i came from serbia mm-hmm. are we enemies are we I'm uh, uh, right yeah <laughs> those, those, those people who are they killers well, yeah who, 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 who are they, they? Is she caring about <laughs> um, no no cut this off <laughs> please <laughs> your podcast is not gonna go well <laughs> no that's actually i like that <laughs> i'm joking that's <clears throat> no it's <clears throat> it's not that i'm the only person with an accent you yeah you are good i, I have but there, there are yeah. people people out there like from all around the world mm-hmm. and that's empowering that's like that's what i spoke about uh, i started a project during um covid mm-hmm. it's called i pluribus unum you know what in pluribus unum is it's on the seal of united states wait e pluribus unum that's in latin no idea out of many one okay so out of many different countries and different uh people uh, we came here and we became all and one. we became one and what is that on it's on a quarter okay it's on the seal of United States. If you pull out seal of United States now, you will see. Let's let me pull it up. Come on, Americans. <laughs> <laughs> am I gonna teach you? Well, I don't know if I'm American. <laughs> I say, well, I am. Um, I am American. Obviously. Anyhow, that is that's all what what I talk about. It's we need to first break the surface level of communication. We need to get into. A, silly or serious conversation but we need to talk with each other yeah that means that we need to be turned to each other that means that we need to give time to each other that means that we are going to be better people Mm -hmm. immediately like if you give time to somebody if you are i came here you you call me to like i'm i'm in your house right right so you invite people to your podcast to your house to your studio to to share stories Mm mm-hmm if we don't have if we only keep the surface level of communication this is this will never happen right right so that was just surprising and kind of mesmerizing when i moved here i just could not understand why do people not care why they don't really open up 
why they don't talk with each other. You didn't see that here when you moved here? No. Now, it can be from two perspectives. Mm -hmm. I am just new here right. and I am by myself and I am, I need to make my community, my, you know, my world. Mm -hmm. I need to start my story here. And then, of course, you feel like any feeling that we have is like 50% really very personal and 50% what the society is giving us. Yeah. And so I felt that and then I was like, okay, whoever I try to make friends with, we will become close, but then first time, and I'm that person like who will tell you honestly what I think. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, what do you think? Should I this or that? I will tell you what I think and I will be realistic as realistic and as a friend, you, I mean, if you have friends who are just telling you how amazing you are, then fuck it, you know, like they're right. not true. Yeah. So this is who I am. And also is like that, like, how, how, hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Everybody's good home. Like, you know, somebody might be dying and you're like, just everybody's mm. good. Yeah. Because you don't, you're too busy to keep that going and you don't know how to say like, hey, I, maybe I need to talk with somebody. Mm. And that whole idea of understanding that and then digging deeper into like what people really feel and how, what can I do? Mm -hmm. You know, like what can I do as an artist? I have a voice as an artist. So if I just keep it and keep my art and what I create for myself, that's a jerking off. You know? right. <laughs> this is, this is, it, it's stupid. It, right. It's not stupid. It's just, I, there are artists who just are creating for puppies. Mm -hmm. Awesome. There are artists who are like, you need to have your, some, some sort of passion call. So, you know, like why you want to paint yeah. or why you paint wanna... cookie. What do yeah. you, what's, what's the message? Like, what mm. do you want? the viewer to feel yeah even if you want them to feel scared or pain mm -hmm. whatever you know like there's some dark art out there All right right but again i just said there is some dark art out there so that's a feeling mm -hmm. right so it makes me feel like oh my god shit like i really i don't want it in my house yeah that's it period because i want you know like Good life, energy life is or, good. Yeah. yeah exactly but that artist wanted to do that like th they're right so as an as an artist to use your voice like i think that uh stronger i am my voice is going to be stronger mm -hmm. and all what i care about is literally that i don't need to know your reaction somewhere out there when you see my art i just want you to feel something right that's a that's the first thing. Like, I want you to have a feeling. I want that to start to move something in you. So to, to touch your life in some sort of a way. Mm -hmm. I'm already touching your life by putting art out there and whoever sees it, sees it. But to feel something and then, you know, like opportunity to have a huge fucking wall, you have to leave a good message there. Mm -hmm. You need to, it's not just okay, here is a pretty face. No, that face means community. That mm. means the woman who survived, the man who survived, somebody we lost, you know, mm. or there is a message. Like I have a wall in, in uptown that says, pluribus unum, in the middle of it, and it goes out of many, one up and down. Mm -hmm. So why uptown? Because it's the most diverse uh, community in, in Chicago. Like you have people from all around the world there. Yeah. Do you have a picture of that on your Instagram? Yeah, I have a video. I might even have a picture. That's it's okay. on my website. I was just you can go ahead. On the website? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll pull it up right now. That way. Yeah, you can go I on can my website. Take yeah. a look at it. When you go to murals? Uh huh. Oh, it's that one right there. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Mm -hmm. That's e, that whole. E pluribus unum. E pluribus unum. E pluribus unum. Interesting. Yeah. I'll post it for everybody to see. Thank you. Um, during this conversation. Awesome. Um, 
that's that's one of the reasons why why social media is great yeah so everybody can see it um another thing is like empowering through workshop like through like working with people and and bringing people into the art mm -hmm. because it it brings emotion it brings um feeling of community of uh, we do belong together no matter are you you know like yellow mm -hmm. or not or you are black or not or mm -hmm. you are white or not it doesn't really matter we all have like arms legs i hope and we all have heart yeah. we all have have um blood same color mm -hmm. we're all humans <laughs> it's all red the so, inside of us all yeah, the same <laughs> exactly all the same so why not embracing what like you came from one part of of mm -hmm. old yugoslavia mm -hmm. i came from another like your neighbor probably is mexican and the next one is african-american and the next one's polish like and we all close have some, very close yes i mean this is fucking yeah this this is where we are and and all those people have a superpower in there yeah and we all have one thing in common is we or somebody from our immediate family came here mm -hmm. with the same idea to make a better future from for us or our kids like i didn't want my my kid like i to be born anywhere else right like i was like um when i have a kid and i was in serbia it's not going to be born in in serbia mm. that's it period like what the fuck is this when did you <laughs> hold you when you decided that <laughs> 20 20 yeah 20 pretty i mean much. i mean that's I, that's a you know that valid. i i knew that that i'm gonna have a kid one day yeah with somebody or you know like no sure. it was just okay i am going to have a child and it's not gonna be born in serbia yeah. it'll be serbian because i'm serbian that's it yeah that's enough it's not that i don't love that country right that's my my country but it's that was the best way to to bring a better life better opportunity yeah. because you know, like you grow up with the idea that you know you want to do so much and then there is no opportunity there's a box yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta yeah. get out <laughs> so that's what i want to empower kids here kids everywhere in mm -hmm. in the world that's why i started that project that's why i started project with empowering youth uh and which API, project is i'm so, go ahead sorry i did work with um youth guidance mm -hmm. um in 2017 and i built it uh workshops for the summer for the kids who are in very affected areas like this one was uh on the south side um longwood academy mm -hmm. and i worked with children who are coming from a completely different backgrounds completely different backgrounds and they're all coming from uh, not only poverty but very um, areas that are affected with the crime right and even going there you know not even now when I think about this <laughs> what did I sign up for <laughs> you know, why, why am I crazy um, but what was so empowering is to hear them I I had our first project was for them to they all had the phones and I was like, okay, I gotta make a connection. They're not gonna drop the phones for me. Who am I? There's this right. you know, lady artist <laughs> here. <laughs> artist. What the fuck she wants, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I was like, Hey guys, pull out your phones and they're like, Yes, you know? Uh -huh. And I told them, Look up what your name means. And then they looked it up and I'm like, Let's just paint it. Yeah read as much like you have a whole day like we don't need to do anything else just research what your name means mm -hmm. and then i'm gonna give you paint i'm gonna tell you a story and then i told him some empowering story to find colors that mean something about their heart about their so it's an art therapy yeah when you go through that and then you go through a motion of like somebody getting out of their shell especially kids, especially kids who are dealing with so much shit. Yeah. And I feel that telling that story now, like what, like five years later, like there is no child in the world that didn't deal in the last two years with so much shit. Like we went through a major yeah. 
pandemic, you know, and we are still in it. We are just ignor <laughs> ignoring right. it, right? right? We are more immune in a, in a every good way. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just empowering them to to tell their story, to to feel some sort of like encouragement to feel comfortable expressing themselves yes and then that really that working with them just inspired in me like okay i want to push this forward so aside from in pluribusunum i have this idea to paint kids mm -hmm. all around the world with you are amazing or the the power is in you mm. messages in their language mm. anywhere but as I started, I like with, that. Yeah, as I started with the uh, pluribus unum, uh, yes, the idea is to take it around the world. But COVID started, and I was like, okay, so you gotta fix your first your house, and then you go further through the neighborhood, and right. then you go in your country, and then you. So I was like, okay, let me just paint a mural in uptown. Let's figure out like I live in uptown. Let's paint the mural in uptown then the next one was downtown chicago and then the next one was in miami and then you know it just mm -hmm. kept moving you you kind of grow it same with youth empowerment so uh that's that's what makes me happy that's yeah. what because it somewhere da if if i need to pick one reason why is to sh so if if there is one yeah if, if there is one word mm -hmm. to explain that it's my son it's danny so but not him as one person it's him as a youth because we if we don't give the best to them what are we doing like we, right. we're supposed to be smarter than our parents that's kind of inevitable right <laughs> or you know and we practice on them, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if we don't give them opportunity to be better, if we don't tell them that we believe in them, who's gonna tell them? Right. That, right? Yeah. So that's that that makes me that <clears throat> that's that's why the mission is like mm -hmm. for people to be bigger than to think bigger than themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Um so, <laughs> okay. I, I like when you say like, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just keep it short and simple. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with the commission, so people come to you and tell them, tell you their story, something, you know, important aspects of their mm -hmm. life um, or something that encourages them. And then you put it on a painting and you do what kind of art? It's abstract. Abstract. And what does abstract. that exactly mean? I'm sorry. I'm uh oh okay so for the i'm not some, familiar with art at all so okay. uh abstract is there there is i can i can paint a leg in a different forms mm. or i can paint a city in the way that i see it mm -hmm. and also expressive abstraction is um i i'm gonna paint a painting and you can see a dinosaur in it and i'm gonna see a heart mm -hmm. f whatever you know so it's uh it there is no um um known form yeah and when you talk about um figurative abstraction it's more like have you seen what did i do recently the dogs uh, the dog mural yeah yes so did i say that right mural 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 yeah. okay um so you can see the dogs there, but they still have the abstract background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what is? Tell me a little bit about that project, the one with the with the dog. It was commissioned project for a uh, canine social club. It's a puppy daycare. Okay. It's awesome. It's great. Like I, it, it, it was such a great experience to work with the uh, with the man who runs it, uh -huh. who, who owns it. He's uh, he's an architect, and he. I think he quit his job during a recession in 2008 and he was like fuck this you know I'm gonna go and open a daycare where my dogs and my friends dogs and my friends friends dogs can actually run around <laughs> and hang around while everybody else is at work 
and it grew to an amazing business and he's not the only one like they're all over the place yeah. right but yeah we we pay attention to our pets more than ever so that's a good business move and he, absolutely yeah and he reached out he's just a stranger mm -hmm. uh he reached out actually my name was passed to him from another stranger mm -hmm. uh word of mouth um and that's it another that's stranger yeah. was like oh i like this lady's art how about this one oh yeah i'm looking to commission art okay. do you have a count of how many um murals murals yes, you have? I have in chicago uh, alone in Chica mm, i am working on a map Oh. So you will be able to go on my website and you can open my website and go to murals. Okay. And then we can count them. What's your uh, website? What is it called? B-O-J-I-T-T -T, dot com. I knew that. I was just asking for the, I know. the audience. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is such a great... You're like, how many times is he going to ask me? <laughs> All right. B-O-J-I-T-T. -T. Okay, but is the map on there or are you working on getting it? There? No, I'm working on <clears throat> getting a map. It's easy. It's it's time. I'm a one-man show. Yeah. I, one woman show. So yeah. eventually people will be able to go on your website mm -hmm. and be like, All right, I want to check this come. one out. Hold on. Let's start from north. Uh, I think it's around 10 so far okay yeah around 10 uh public art projects uh, around 20 i'm counting the the buildings and the residential buildings and the businesses that have my art in it i mean mm -hmm. that's you know, those are all clients and when you do like the the wall or the mural do you have to get permission from the city or is just the owner of the building is like all right you can put it up um that's not my business to get okay. the permission of oh, the I city. See. They have to have a permission. Uh, if you own a building, uh -huh. so hello everybody. If you own a building uh -huh. uh, or you own a properties, you can put anything that is not offending out there. Um, Without any... No, no um, advertisement. Okay. Like I had a restaurant owner having another property asking me to paint his uh logo on that other so other location mm -hmm. that's so first that's a sign painting i am totally capable of doing this but then he needs three papers for that and i'm not going to mention it that's not my business. right yeah. yeah uh if i do a public project then you know whoever is running that public project they they have, they all have the paper to, yeah what I have to do is my liability insurance, mm -hmm. uh, secured lift, scissor lift, boom lift, whatever it is, you know, just up uh -huh. and yeah, assistant, I require them to have um, certification mm -hmm. to be able to operate the, I call them vehicles, they're not real machines, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the fun part, operating big machines and yeah. going up, uh, yeah that's that's what it is cool um so with the commissions i know when i actually last week i went to the studio mm -hmm. and that's when yeah. we met brought my cousin with me or he's i call him my cousin but he's actually like a distant nephew mm -hmm. <laughs> although he's like way taller than me um but we came by and we checked out your studio and um i remember asking like how do you figure out when to put this line here or when to use this color know. here it's all the feeling it's how yeah. do i don't know does every color have a specific meaning or does it um, or is it different from art art piece to art piece i i usually tell stories through right. like every every piece thank you for asking that question mm -hmm. um every piece has a story so if it's not your story that i'm telling uh it's the story that i wanted to tell about whatever is going like i'm inspired by what's going on in the world what's mm -hmm. going on here i'm inspired by people as people stories um culture music like anything can inspire me but it's more about like important things that are happening and not affecting me mm -hmm. that are affecting more like affecting society fucking abortion thing you know right <laughs> i'm gonna paint something about it i i have bunch of pieces that I created for women's rights. I had a bunch of pieces created for um, equality and mm -hmm. uh, 
I have art out there um, created for like human rights from for for rights to be a different color like you know mm -hmm. racism and stuff like this like it's just whatever inspires me in that moment now I will give a color a person or a thing so the color the shape will be something if I'm telling your story uh, for example if it's you if it's a family mm -hmm. I will give every person a different color mm -hmm. and then the story that you told me is going to actually go like okay and now you come back in this story so there is yellow and there is blue mm -hmm. and there is yellow again you know yellow comes back to this story and then there is yellows you know whatever date of birth so mm -hmm. there is kind of like there is a river going out of yellow mm -hmm. or something like this so and it is i don't plan that in my head i uh when i create um when i tell stories through through my art when i tell people's stories through my art the most time i spend is getting the story out of the person that's like almost like that's probably the toughest you, part right because sometimes they don't want to share things um, and that's okay too but um yes and no uh they will share because they they read this what we are talking about somewhere uh -huh. like i i if if somebody's commissioning art from me they they know you know like my my statement is talking about this mm -hmm. so uh it is about they are reaching out because they want their story to be told through a piece that is visually pleasing to them right mm -hmm. And they already like my art. If they don't like what I paint, like why do why would they call me? I mean, it's simple like that. Uh, and then getting the story, getting the important parts of the story. Um, I had a family recently that commissioned me, uh, commissioned me for their family story, and uh, they came in, and one of their young kids got diagnosed with. Um, level two diabetes mm -hmm. and it's like non-stop they, they need to be on monitors and everything non-stop and it's mm -hmm. a five-year-old you know like he runs he jumps yeah. he, it's non-stop for him and he can you know like whatever the trigger can be playing soccer yeah or, yeah so and there are two of them for two of them to come to the studio to talk about this is like this is their free day and he's in in school with the nurse and so they came in and I know their mom from like it's a friend of friend of friend. It's passed down, mm -hmm. you know, like, but we, we were talking about the commission for a while mm -hmm. and they came in and I started asking them questions about kids, about their life, how they met, blah, blah, blah. And she goes like, OK, so when are you going to what do you need from us? <laughs> and her husband looked at her <laughs> and he's like, she's interviewing us like for less. 30 uh, minutes <laughs> so it comes naturally yeah. it, it comes as as i'm telling you the story like it some people have it some people don't period that's yeah. it um so i will just get that or some like the latest commission that i did the client was like oh shit, i gotta put that story together <laughs> so what am i gonna do and so thankfully we had a gap in time mm-hmm when I was busy with other things and she's been probably watching the stories on like I, I told her go and literally stalk my Instagram and stalk my um, stalk, stalk my website and you can you know like spend time like yeah. binge watch it literally and then I will tell you more you give me it's gonna be better right more you give me i will have less questions that's it and yeah. i don't have much questions like i usually ask like what are three pieces that are uh your favorite and you see the colors that i use like mm -hmm. they're happy colors like mm -hmm. i don't use beige mm. which it's possible but that's not my it's color. boring so, well uh, not it, always it can it it doesn't need to be boring right. like depends how you use it right but if you have a favorite color, of course I'm going to ask you for your favorite mm. color. That's going to be the color, either f for you or your loved one. Like, it's, 
I'm going to put it in a story, in a painting in a story. Um, <laughs> and it took her about, we had that gap of three weeks that I worked on a different project. And one night I just, I told her like, I'm starting your uh, painting next week. I pulled out colors. We spoke about like shapes and um, like the textures that she likes. Everything was down. There is no story. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I learned about her a little bit, but I really don't know that like under the, the surface, you know, yeah. I don't know. And then one night, like we came home from dinner and I got an email from her. And it starts, okay, here it is. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to read this tomorrow. I'm, 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 you know, like this, uh -huh. this is a family time. And everybody went to bed. Everybody fell asleep. Puppies are fed, you know, <laughs> like walked. And I was like, and I usually don't, when I say like I'm done working, no matter that I'm creative, mm -hmm. like I, I'm, I train my mind to kind of shut off. And I was sitting in a in a living room and i was like because she didn't give me much mm -hmm. right because it was like unfinished it was intriguing me of course and i opened the email and it was just oh my god i, I wanted to, i was like this is amazing this is all what she wrote everything mm -hmm. everything that she needed to tell me even more and it was so inspiring and it was like almost like I needed to process it. And I took a couple of days and I was like, this is so not intense. Like I don't, it, it's not intense. It was just full. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. And I told her it's literally the way that I feel when, and, and, and I texted her a couple of pictures of process she's like I can't wait to see it but she cannot see really what I'm really writing and what I'm doing and I will tell her like, this is there is a French song that her mom mm -hmm. um, sang to her so she will tell me about that song and her dad was a pilot so he she was telling me something about like take a flight and soar you know mm -hmm. and I was just it like almost meditative you know, and I would just get it out. And when I started painting her painting, it took me about a whole day to to figure out like which part of the story I want to put first, second, third. And then when I was into the painting, when I got into a flow, it was just done mm -hmm. like super, super fast. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I will have actually next week, I'm posting a video about that delivery. But... I picked from the whole story, I picked a word like reflection mm -hmm. and there is a, a little uh, note that she put, it's, I am truly a ref reflection of you. I did not know what this, that, like she just put in one point, like uh, little, little pieces of poem that she brought. And then when we opened the, I had my videographer with me there. Of course, it's, it's such a, such a great story. And I opened it and I said, this is, the name is a reflection and this is what I wrote. Would you tell me what is the, the poem that you wrote about? She starts sobbing. She's crying and she's like, mm -hmm. uh, it is about my mom when she was dying. I wrote a poem for her mm -hmm. and it was all about like what she taught me. And that's the, the end of it. Like I've, I see myself right now. I'm, I'm a truly reflection of you. I, I was like, oh my God, mm, <laughs> you know, yeah. it was so emotional, so beautiful. And that's, that's the connection. You cannot learn that. You cannot study that. Mm -hmm. It's just, you have it. It's like people have a sense or not. People have a sense for, to study medicine, to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. it, I just felt it. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. This, is, this is what <laughs> it is. Yeah. That's mm, cool. Yeah. Um, so, so with the colors, do you like when you when you present the painting to them, do you tell them like, mm -hmm. all right, I put this here because of this? I tell them the story. Yeah. And yeah. then you when you said um, you kind of think about which part you want to put down first, is, is it layers? Yes. 
lay one layer on top of another and then you see bits and pieces mm -hmm. of the layer in the back mm -hmm. right it's all build it up yeah okay it's like it's like life right literally it's like life i'm sorry about it no no you're okay yeah it i i will start with what is the most like the foundation of mm -hmm. like if you were to write somebody's story what's the foundation how do you want to build it mm -hmm. like, you know the concrete the, the yeah the base goes first and then the opening uh line or whatever it is actually goes somewhere on the surface it's not on the top mm -hmm. but i will put it like that's my maybe second to the end layer yeah. gotcha yeah and then um but when honestly it's not planned like it's not like okay the, i'm getting to the second to the end the layer no, it's, okay, let's, no when it's it happens natural. you feel it, it. it yeah okay. it's, it's the feeling so it's like you might put one last stroke down mm -hmm. without you knowing that's your last stroke right mm -mm. i will uh i mean or maybe i will notice that like you know or I it's missing up, something I'm like, okay it's done yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not uh, it's usually yeah. like i will step away and then maybe come back to it mm, it's not maybe it's always like i will look at the the final piece and then there is one that the, the end like it's like closing mm -hmm. you know like the wow yeah <laughs> yeah okay yeah that's it um so with art and your paintings which are awesome oh wait actually no i want to ask you about a couple paintings that i saw mm -hmm. at your studio okay one is my favorite one do you remember which one it was? No. <laughs> oh, the the I know the pink, the pink one. Uh, like it? it was it was like the turquoise one with the with the mirror in it, like the car mirror. Oh yes, 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 yes. Tell yes. me about we that one a little bit. We were talking about it. Yeah. yeah, it's a reflection. Yeah, it's um, I called it uh, 154 miles per hour. 154. Of, miles one, per hour one, 147 something like it's okay. a number <laughs> that is uh rarely achievable okay <laughs> right <laughs> miles per hour that's that's the point uh and you you saw the line that looks like a mirror right initially i thought it was somebody's glasses and like it, which it is was, okay which right. is totally like i I try not to tell people what to see it in, mm -hmm. you know, unless they are like, it's a commission piece because the point is, I, that's, that's why when you see the, the, all the swirls that look like a letters and I'm, I wrote something, mm -hmm. it looks like cursive. There's nothing in there. You can find a word, mm -hmm. but there are not words. There are not, they, they might be looking like letters Yeah. that sometimes it looks like love. People find joy my intention is not to write that uh -huh. my intention is only to to follow the motion like what comes from here here you know right and you're going to find out what it is that's it yeah. that's it so with with that painting that you like your favorite mm -hmm. um friend of mine asked were you there when swell and asked me so why turquoise here no i and wasn't there so tell you that after remind me to tell you about sure. co collector's question <laughs> uh it so it is it is uh all about like how do we live so fast mm. and the reflection in that mirror like that's a side mirror and to to go like so fast to be like there is a bird on the top so to go so fast and to be free like a bird you kind of need to understand that your I, I like to sometimes I like to say like mind and heart need to be in the same place mm -hmm. or what did they tell you that day it's uh I don't remember how I don't I remember it. exactly but it, it is about like the, the mirror is there the uh -huh. shape is there but the background in a shape and around in, in same so it's about like what you see here you see in front of you Mm -hmm. only if you're free only if you if you release like okay all the worries and you, you just let go yeah you know? yeah no yeah. That, i like that one and mm. 
I think it's the colors and then that, you know, that odd shape that it's mm -hmm. there. That's there, but it's not in your other paintings, right? It's mm -hmm. like one very unique painting <clears throat> compared to your other Thank ones. You. I like it. Thank you. And, and then I wanted to ask you about the one that you'll never, ever let go. Oh, yeah. The, the one, the big one. That, that was that, that was, was in the hallway. Yeah, that was uh painted in Sofa 2019, and it is about woman empowerment. It's about women's rights, mm -hmm. and especially after last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. I, you know, like what else is gonna make you not let go on that painting, right? Right. Um, because I have a clear goal, what I want to do when I grow up, mm -hmm. <laughs> what is the end goal, clear mission, uh -huh. uh, and uh, that's to have a place where uh, I'm going to have like a artist retreat, does it make sense? Artist retreat? Yes, and that's going to be in that space. Okay. Uh, not because only of women, but also about stories, about empowerment. Mm -hmm. Everything that I talk about is in that painting. That painting was painted um, over the five days mm -hmm. of Sofa. And uh, it was about the, the, the whole booth that we created. It was 21 female artists from... Uh, United States mm -hmm. that each of us picked the law that needed to be made for bettering women's rights which is there are some stupid things there but we did not have a right to have a credit card mm. open a business like I won't be here if we were like you know 100 years ago right. 50 years ago yeah um, I filed for divorce um have a right to vote and stuff, uh, join a combat, mm -hmm. like being there is certain, I mean, you know, like you can't work in a certain field and stuff like that. So every single artist picked one of the laws that needed to be made to, to better, improve it, to get us to, uh, that was made actually to get us where we are now. Oh, I see. And I was like, no, I'm going to talk about now. Mm -hmm. Like we, we can't stop. That's it. Like we got to keep supporting each other and we need to keep moving because the world is a better place if we have a better right. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, I right. believe in that. Of course. <laughs> you got to. <laughs> I'm course. here. You know, I'm going to convince you. Yeah. I'm joking. No, I no, mean, no, no. I do. Um, Everybody is. It is it, it's what's, what's the point of even raising a family if you... Are, what are you teaching your kids, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't stand up for whoever has has a baby, for that person, right? or if you're not there, or you know, like if we we have to support. I mean, it's it's and we live in a modern world, so yeah. it's not gonna work any other way. It can it's gonna be the end product if the, that we are gonna have equal rights, and I know that it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm how we'll figure it out. with time right with time and, and with everybody um, working together yeah and you know for some things we need revolutions for some things we need i hope it's not a war <laughs> yeah. it, it, but it's ongoing war right yeah. uh anyhow it's just a piece that represents women from all uh backgrounds and shapes who literally for five days lined up to be traced mm -hmm. on the wall. Yeah, because you were tracing and, them, yeah. right? Okay. And they give me their, they either gave me empowering words to mm -hmm. write or their overcoming stories. And I told them, by doing this, you are actually empowering the next one. Mm. Because that's, the, it's simple like that. Yeah. You do it, you show that you can, and then the next person, because all what we need as humans is to know that it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be who you are. It's okay to, you know, like how would you run if they didn't tell you that it's okay <laughs> when you were a baby? How would you yeah. walk if somebody didn't encourage you to walk? So uh, 
that was it. It yeah. was simple like that. Like this is th- there's one lady who started, mm-hmm. and then there's another one, and there's another one, and there's another one, and there is a whole painting that, you know, has like more than. I think it, on the end it was like seventy five people. L- yeah. Like tr- different tracing. Trace okay. traces. Yes. Not traces. Yeah. yeah. Literally. Yeah. So different five. Uh, oh, wow. seventy five. More than that, like I, I stopped counting at mm-hmm. 75. I was like, okay, this, okay, <laughs> it's, it's, it's more than 10. Yeah. <laughs> but it was beautiful. It was so powerful experience for me and also everybody who was there. Like mm-hmm. they were like, I mean, you, in this is like an, uh, it, it's art and um, <clears throat> architectural, uh, art and, uh, uh, and the art object show. It's expo mm-hmm. and nobody had a line. It's not that I'm like, okay, I created a line. No, it's about, that's why people, that's why women came together to actually empower, to be mm-hmm. a part of something that is not, I don't care if somebody remembers my name or not, but for me, the point was like, she will go home and this helps her move from zero to mm-hmm. one or from A to B. Like she, she was a part of something that is, it's a movement. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like my name is the last thing on, <laughs> on that <laughs> list. It doesn't matter. Like it was something that she belonged to. Like she went to an expo and she was a part of creation of something that is bigger even than her. Yeah. That's it. So, sorry about that. My no light kind of just shut off. How are we looking though? Good. 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 It's perfect. Cool. Yeah. Um, so along with your artwork, right, um, I noticed that you have some pillows in your studio as well with art on it and kind of like decorative, um, pillows for people's homes. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you do as well? Like, do you, do you only do paintings or do you do other things as well? Uh, I, I studied textile design, so it's, it's totally in me. Like I, I will always make a product Mm -hmm. that has my art on it and the best way to find out what is to go on my website i mean that's yeah. <laughs> easy like that uh eventually it's gonna be fabric and it's gonna be wallpaper but that's not the goal like i i need to keep creating this legacy mm-hmm. and the product is just a it's a sub product of what I'm right doing. of yeah. your of your passion of yes. your message or the the pillows are uh it's it, they're meaningful because during COVID, mm-hmm. I reached out to a friend that uh, when I was, her name is Nevena, actually, she's she's Serbian and she's a fashion designer who works in LA now. She builds costumes mm-hmm. for TV uh, and uh, she's amazing. Like she, she just does an amazing job. She moved from Chicago to LA just to pursue that and that's that's harder job than mine. Like she, she, she will just make costumes for the performance all the time, which is like sewing and, you know, cutting and it's beautiful. She has a passion for it, mm-hmm. but it's like, when we talk about physical therapy and physics and uh, physiality, mm. uh, this is just another, like a hard work that you really need to love it so much. So you can do it. Yeah. And, and you put your body and soul literally in it. And so I reached out beginning of COVID. And I I was like, how are you guys doing? Like, you know, like there is industry shut down. So there is no work for her. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know because I, I'm like going back and forward to that industry. I'm like six months in, six months out at that time. And she said, well, you're down. Like I, you know. Now it's time for us to do our projects because we always talk about like once when we have time. You know? Right, right, right. And I'm like, oh my God, really? She goes, yeah. I'm like, let's make those pillows. She's like, yeah. I'm like, that's simple. Yeah. And I sent her money. She went to LA uh, fabric store, got the fabric that we were talking about. Mm-hmm. It's easy, you know. It's like you're sending somebody to buy this and this camera. Yeah. <laughs> and, <it's, laughs> uh, and she found it and then I gave her the measurements and I was like, this is going to be collaboration between you and me. 
this is just the beginning it's simple like that let's make a pillows because i want to paint on them mm -hmm. and i want them to be the decorative yeah part of of home like it's it's always been there you know i paint murals i, I paint i make paintings like mm -hmm. i I, I do custom like if if somebody wants to commission i i paint the furniture like i use all those mm -hmm. chairs that i have in my studio so it can be you know different objects but they i'm not manufacturing them you know they're not mass produced right yeah so they're all like original unique pieces. Yeah, yeah they're original pieces so far it's not that i'm against you know uh mass production it's just it's a different part it's yeah yeah it's a different it's a it can be under the the same ab umbrella of 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 a business but mm -hmm. that's a business question like we're not talking business now no no no, we're not talking <laughs> not about at all no i was just asking uh because mm. i saw the pillows and you know i, was, I saw that you do like interior and design all, yeah and, and they're all different it's in your studio as well not interior design but furniture so, and yeah. like you said mm -hmm. yeah so I just wanted to bring that up because, hey, you never know. Someone might be looking for pillows. Yeah, <laughs> they're all hand-painted, hand-dyed. Yeah. No, they're um, very cool. And it's yeah. like the same message, right? It's your same mm -hmm. message as your mm -hmm. paintings, empowerment. Mm -hmm. Just through through a pillow. Through a pillow. Through a pillow, yeah. Yeah. Are people okay to come and visit your studio? Yes. Or do you have specific hours? Yes, I... Uh, I usually do, uh, if somebody reaches out, they reach out through my website. They mm -hmm. find me somehow. Like You can yeah. look up Chicago what, so your So your website is bojitt.com. Boj, Boj, okay. If you just put bojitt, it will pop up. Can you uh, tell me a little bit about your name? Why Bo, Bojit? Uh, if I'm saying that right? Bojit, yeah. Bojit. Uh, when I was in college... I had a group of friends that, you know, they're just in all different sorts of different um, careers, or di different, how do you say that, fields uh -huh. now. Um, and uh, we, will, we were hanging out. I, I was working on my second or, th or third uh, fashion show. And so my apartment, my studio is a living room, you know, and there is a rack over there and there are fabrics everywhere and one of them is cooking milos is cooking for me he works on uh actually i'm not sure that he works on kale Magdanska terrasa okay. still uh another one is you know going outside picking up stuff like the third one's walking my dog and and we're just joking like you know how many people you need <laughs> to yeah. run this shit <laughs> yeah know? i'm like well if you want to work for me i'll take you wherever and milos goes like and then we gotta brand you i'm like yeah you gotta brand me at that time my so my fashion studio um was called tigidi Tiggity. I'll tell you what that means. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so Milos goes like, and he's eating uh, uh, the. I I remember that like yesterday, he's sitting on a chair on a, you know, comfortable chair uh -huh. in the living room, and he is eating a uh, pekmes. You know what is pekmes? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So he's eating jelly from from a jar that my mom mom made, uh -huh. and he goes like, budget, that's it, your budget. And he called me Bojit like from the, that day. Even now, if we call him, he would be like, "Hey, what's up, Bojit?" Yeah. So I was like, "Okay, sure." Like, and I didn't pay attention to it. Like, I totally like it's here. It's in the back of my mind. Like, okay, that's sure. Like, Milos calls me Bojit, and they all one after another gradually started calling me Bojit. I'm like, "Okay, sure, no yeah. problem." And then when I was starting to to paint like when i was putting this like okay i need to brand this like i i have to i want to sign my painting not like boyana mm -hmm. right it's gotta be it it doesn't need to be people most some people just write full name mm -hmm. I'm like, it's, it's budget that's that's what it is like i waited for so long to, to start painting because i was so busy with other <laughs> things then this is like this is awesome because i said and i always bring myself to that moment when you know we got a brand you, you know? yeah. <laughs> and i already have a brand you know let's brand me again but yeah my old studio was tigidi 
Tigidi. It's T I G I D I. Uh-huh. And Tigidi, do you know how to say suspenders in Serbian? Tregerke. Tregerke. Tregeri. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes. So when I was little, uh-huh. And Tregeri, that was my favorite uh piece of clothing. Like, uh-huh. Literally, I will not go anywhere without Tregeri. <laughs> and I will put them on the skirts, on the shirt, on, on anything. <laughs> and yeah, and I, I will, my mom, you know, like, she always got me like a bunch of them. And I will have my Tigidi. So that was Tigidi. Tigidi. I could not ah, say Tregeri. Ah. So it's Tigidi. So when I, uh, when I <laughs> needed to start uh, my company back home, mm-hmm. I was like, it's going to be Tigidi Design. That's it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So that was that was it. People were like, "What is it? Is it TGD?" I was like, no, it's Tigidi. <laughs> yeah. Tigidi and Bojid. I like it. Mm. Although I'm probably saying it wrong. No. no you're good. <laughs> so I really, really like your art, and I think if you wanna, you know, if there's anybody out there that is interested in some art or is building a new home and want some cool artwork in there with a meaning and a message that is personal to them i encourage you to reach out to boyana through her social media or um, look her up on her website but i do encourage you to reach out to her because her artwork is very very cool and um, i will be posting some pictures throughout this episode of the artwork that we talked about but um, let's support Boyana because you know this is why we're doing this Thank you know you. this is why I want to have you on is because I didn't know who you were and you've been here how long it's been hour and a half well no I'm or, saying or like it, in years. Chicago <laughs> or 15, 15, years. 15 years depends which how long yes. you're asking <laughs> yeah I'm joking so I yeah. want other people to hear about you too and to look at your art or go visit your studio thank you Thank you for having me here. Uh, I want you to succeed. That's why I, that's another reason why I came here. Thank you. That's actually the first reason. I want to support what you're doing because it's beautiful. Thank you. I want you to have more guests and to go and do what your heart tells you to do because this is great. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, One more thing I want to just kind of go, what is, I know we mentioned your website, but you also have an Instagram. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is the same name, right? It's, it's the same name. So if you look up, if you go to any kind of internet platform uh-huh. and spell out B-O-J-I-T-T, Bojit, you are going to find a way Okay. to my art. Yeah. Is... I'm working on it constantly. That's a constant <laughs> work. Like... like you said, you're a one-man team. Yeah, one woman team. One woman I team. I'm like, sorry. I, I feel like a woman. <laughs> yeah. It's just so natural. One woman. Mm-hmm. One yeah, woman it team. is. It is. Even even I was like, okay, one man. Oh, no, yeah. One man show. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. I'm a one man team. You here. are a one man team. As That's you good. saw me like trying to figure out my cameras. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Next I would... time I see you, you will have three people helping you out here. Hopefully. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't um, hope, actually. I believe that it's going to happen. I yeah. think so. You know, you as, as long as we keep putting out content and mm-hmm. working together, you know, people sh- can't be afraid just to come reach out. out. Yeah, just reach yeah. out. That's all it took. I was If you're... I mean, it doesn't... Does it hurt? No. No. The does least, it? Yeah. The least that can happen. There are two ways that you can get an answer. Yes or no. Right. And what I learned from um, uh, Art Advisor whose book I read late, uh, early in 2000s, it was, um, if you don't hear no, Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean no. It's not no until you hear a firm no. Right? Right. So uh, don't, you know, don't impose on people and be like uncomfortable on people, but you know, reach out follow up yeah what there's because how am i going to succeed if i just send you an email and say like this is my new art yeah and you're not (laughs) i'm like okay you if you and i don't even have a shop on my website okay this is in works 
and I had it and then I moved it because I want to do it in a different way. Like it's always evolving. Mm -hmm. But even the artist who has clickable or shoppable buttons. Yeah. My goal is to, to send you an email by the end of this year and you can just click and okay. Yeah. But how am I going to encourage you? I got to tell you something. I got to follow up with you. You So right at this moment, you can go on my website and mm -hmm. if you want to know about news and what's going on and get an email about new collection of paintings and especially I'm creating one after a trip to Serbia mm -hmm. and it's going to be inspired by our culture. Uh, uh, by like all the visuals that we have, everything in folklore that we have, everything mm -hmm. in textile that we have. I already have idea, but you know, like this is just going to be like, whoops, evoking it again. Uh, so, and I'm going to send an email out their newsletter that, you know, it's ready or it's dropping at this and this time. Or mm -hmm. if you want to pre-sign up to come and see it before the show and stuff like that. There are collectors out there who are, you know, waiting for that. Yeah because it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Like I haven't been home for like 15 years. Mm -hmm. like, uh, so these kind of things, that's what I send as an email. And how am I going to know that you like it if I just send it to you once? Mm -hmm. You have your own business. You have your own life. My business is my art, not your business. Mm -hmm. And if you say that you like it, and, and this is, this is you know, like encouragement to anybody who's trying to do something out there. Mm -hmm. You can hear that from CEOs to, to people who are entrepreneurs like you and me. Mm -hmm. It's, you have to follow up. That's it. You have to follow up and you need to be present and keep, yeah. keep being present. So that's... It can be afraid to ask. Like you said, the worst that can happen is you got to know. It's not even the worst view. Yeah, what is, yeah, like you said, <laughs> what, what? one door closes, another yeah, door opens. Like, thank you so much. I have time for something <laughs> else. Yeah. Well, thank you, Boyana, so much for coming on. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, did you want to mention anything specific? I don't want to have you go home and be like, shoot, I should have said that or mm -mm. I should have mentioned that. No, I think that we, like, if I need to say something <laughs> else, I'll come back. Okay, perfect. Yeah? Okay, cool. Did you have a good time though? Yes, yes, that was awesome. awesome. Yeah, did you have a good time? I did, I awesome. did. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, that was great. Awesome, thank you so much, Boyana. <laughs> People, go check out her social media. Um, you guys will like her artwork and thank you for tuning in and peace out, everybody. Yeah, I'm sending love. Where's the button? That's right, we're all sending love. Where's the button?